Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, so let's just dive in. And let's start off with this tweet that I tweeted out earlier today. And uh, I said, this ADA versus XRP you know, argument seems like a huge distraction. I could care less about this nonsense. And I honestly do believe that there's a huge distraction right now around XRP in the ADA community. I also think that there's a ton of distractions happening, you know, outside of crypto as well to really kind of, you know, move everyone's attention away from things that are happening. Uh, recently, throughout this entire week and throughout this entire month as well, we have seen some major financial institutions jumping into crypto, major banks as well, banking entities, elites at these banking entities. Like everyone needs to take a step back and uh, stop playing into this nonsense. I've seen so many individuals in the XRP community trying to go out to bat for the XRP community because, you know, someone, aka Charles Hoskinson, you know, came out and said that the XRP community is just a full, you know, full of bunch of people just saying, oh, conspiracy theories about the SEC and stuff. Listen, it does not matter. Who cares what these people are saying? Focus on the bigger picture. There's bigger things to focus on. Not only that, but we know for a fact that this entire SEC case is complete garbage. It is utter trash. They are hiding facts. They are hiding things. And I do believe that these things will see the light of day. And if they don't, then whatever. Ripple will win. Uh, XRP will have regulatory clarity because guess what? It's either one of two things. One, the SEC reveals it all to continue the fight and and to continue delaying. Or two, right? They don't want anything to be seen in the in, in the public eye. So they continue to hide everything and they settle with Ripple or, you know, a clear win for Ripple. Either way, you know, I do believe that the path leads to a a blatant win either way because guess what? Even if the information does see the light of day, it's going to be so damning for the SEC that their entire reputation and their argument around this SEC case will be completely thrown out. And uh, we do see from Digital Asset Investor, uh, some would call it a grand conspiracy. Brad Garlinghouse is describing, I would call it directly over the target. We are seeing a lot of otherwise sensible people act concerned. That's the tell. And listen closely to this. Well, I think the question we're asking is, what are they trying to hide? You know, what, what is it in these notes that they have been ordered six different times to turn them over to us? We still don't have them. Each time they've, you know, filed uh, appeals or, you know, uh, new derivations of attorney-client privilege. And, uh, you know, so for me, as much as anything, it's what is in these notes that they are so committed to not sharing with the world? And look, I, I think most people who look at this situation, I mean, I, I have no idea. I, I'm, I can't wait. I hope we get to see them. We'll, we'll find out. I hope. Uh, but, you know, if you step back and just think about some of the big picture, at the time, uh, XRP, and people forget this, but at the beginning of 2018, before that speech, XRP was the second most valuable digital asset after Bitcoin. And then the SEC kind of anointed ETH, and ETH obviously has, has benefited from that. And then uh, not too much longer, you know, another year and a half later, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple asserting that XRP is a security. Well, I think the question we're asking is, what and that is the gist of it, right? Because we've just recently talked about this in my, you know, why Ripple and XRP will shock the world uh, video. It, I talked to you guys about how XRP was moving very fast um, in, in the sense of flipping Ethereum. Well, it already did at that point, but also flipping Bitcoin. It was very close to it. Um, and I think that a lot of these elites, these higher ups as well, that were stacking Ethereum, that were a part of Ethereum since its inception, I think that they were concerned. You could see a lot of them. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, if you were an Ethereum or Bitcoin investor, you were terrified of XRP. And they still are. Hence why we are continuously seeing FUD being, you know, thrown out there by these Bitcoin maxis, these Ethereum maxis that don't know anything anything happening or maybe they do know and they're terrified of the potential that xrp holds behind it listen at the end of the day i believe going forward we will see fair uh, a fair trial i think that xrp will get regulatory clarity i think ripple will continue to not only expand rapidly with on-demand liquidity but i think that they are going to 
provide XRP as a medium of exchange and a settlement tool to thousands on top of thousands on top of thousands of major financial institutional and banking clients, and XRP will soon take over in its respective way. And I think that that is happening at a very rapid pace. And also, talking about things happening in a very rapid pace around financial institutions and major banking clients, BNY Mellon, we just talked about BNY Mellon in a video from yesterday. Uh, I said, well, they said, we are reimagining financial markets through blockchain and digital assets, select U.S. institutional clients can now view traditional and digital assets on one platform, secure and resilient. Digital asset, um, asset custody, a milestone in our innovation journey. And listen, this is really the truth of what's happening. We are seeing crypto and digital assets morph into the reality of banks. Banks are soon going to offer and accept crypto-driven payment and payment uh, products. And I honestly think that this is, I mean, in the last couple months, I would, I would argue that this entire year in 2022, right, we have been in a bear market. There's no argument behind that. We have been in a bear market, but this has not felt like a bear market at all. And I know that a lot of other individuals out there will speak on that as well. And they will, you know, agree with me because at the end of the day, we have been seeing adoption after adoption from major entities. And this is just another one to tally up on the board. And this is a huge one as well. And talking more so about this, I take you to PolySign. And why are we talking about PolySign? Well, this is the biggest hidden secret around XRP. Built in the future of digital assets, PolySign develops state-of-the-art, secure, scalable infrastructure for financial institutions to fully leverage their digital assets. Now, we wouldn't think anything of this if this was just another company in crypto. But this isn't just another company in crypto. This is probably one of the biggest well-known secrets behind XRP. Our mission at PolySign is to drive global use of digital assets by building best-in-class infrastructure that enables institutions to secure and transact in digital assets across the capital markets and payment sectors. And uh, we do see proprietary blockchain technology, leading blockchain um, architects Arthur Brito and David Schwartz, two of the major leading names behind, of course, Ripple with XRP, uh, design PolySign's technology engine for securing digital assets. Hmm, very interesting. And... Um, we do see down here, groundbreaking security, Silicon Valley meets Wall Street, and here you guys have the names behind this. So not only are uh, David Schwartz and Arthur Brito behind this, but also Antoinette O. Uh, Gorman, previously CCO at Ripple Labs, former independent consultant with uh, Promontory Financial Group, following 15 years in traditional banking at MUFG and HSBC. Hmm, pretty high substantial names here. And then, of course, you do see David Schwartz there and then Arthur Brito, which, you know, both of them are uh, major leading names behind Ripple as well as the XRP Ledger. And uh, then we do see up there Tim Keeney, vice chairman, retired vice chairman of BNY Mellon. Hmm, very interesting as well. Um, he was... He also led an organization of 25,000 people responsible for cus, uh, cus, sorry, custody in 25% uh, of global institutional assets. So very large names here, uh, raising the standard and regulation and compliance, of course, and custody at the core. So this is not only going to provide custody for institutional grade clients, but it really kind of plays into what uh, Ripple's main goal is with XRP. And if you guys did remember from the, f the past few videos that I talked to you guys about XRP, their main goal here is to have institutions not only holding, but having custody of XRP and a large portion of it, especially around the escrow. That is their biggest goal right now around XRP, is having all these major institutions holding XRP to keep the price stable at some sort of fixed price. What will that fixed price be? We don't know. It could be triple digits. It could be quadruple digits. We don't know the value of XRP. No one can tell you the value of XRP. If somebody's telling you that XRP is going to $10,000, they do not know. We cannot put a value on XRP. I've always said this on this channel. We could talk about it. We could speculate it. But at the end of the day, no one knows where XRP's value is going to go because we still don't know the true potential of it. The value has not been unleashed yet. You know, what we have seen, XRP going to $3.84, XRP, to, you know, going to almost $2. That's nothing. That's drops in a bucket, okay? When XRP's real value gets unleashed globally, that's when we are going to be talking. And that's when everybody's going to be very excited because guess what? The single digits is nothing compared to where it's going. And um, also, a few of the major connections, obviously a lot of the, uh, 
you know, XRP community has been putting things together, connecting the dots, which uh, I think is incredible. We also do see from Riz XRP here, PolySign XRP, building the future of digital assets. Here you guys have Tim Keeney. And uh, this is following that major announcement of world's largest custodian bank, BNY Mellon, launches crypto custody services. Then over here from Digital Asset Buy, Digital Asset Investor, if you guys don't know, uh, this week BNY Mellon announced they would do crypto custody. The headlines, of course, are BNY Mellon will custody Bitcoin. I'm sure they will custody Bitcoin, but that's not the real story. This thread is credit to at James D A. And then, of course, guys, go check out um, James over on Twitter. Uh, his at here is, uh, you know, labeled if you guys want to go check it out. And uh, here we have BNY Mellon announces crypto custody and spies integrated services. The world's biggest custodian bank beats rival JP Morgan and City to the punch. Very interesting. Then over here, we do see um, a little bit more around this. Here you guys most recently as an advisor for the digital currency company Ripple Labs. This was, of course... Um, this was Matthew Mellon, uh, who did pass away, uh, but we actually do see a few of the discussions behind him. And then also down here, we have a few other connections. So Silicon Valley meets Wall Street, as you guys do see all of the major four here, which we talked about a little bit. Then over here, Vice Chairman PolySign XBNY Mellon as well. Yep. I mean, a lot of these individuals are, you know, from BNY Mellon. Uh, original PolySign executive now. And then we do see down here, Executive Vice President at BNY Mellon. I'm telling you guys, all of the major connections here to BNY Mellon from Ripple are substantial through PolySign. PolySign is the biggest key to all of this. And uh, here you guys have it, Standard Custody and Trust Company, LLC. Um, this is incredible, by the way. Definitely go check out Digital Asset Investor. This is from 2019, but you do see all of the organizers here, all of the major ones, as you guys do see. Tim Keeney again, next to Arthur Brito, Antoinette O'Gorman, John McDonald, and James uh, McGeary. And uh, over here on the second page, we do see Standard Custody and Trust Company. And uh, you see at the bottom, PolySign. PolySign is the biggest one around crypto custody for institutional investors. This is absolutely huge. And the information here is substantial when you tie it to Ripple. We do see over here, uh, BNY Mellon, Modernization of Payments and Collections. Then on the next slide here, we also have... You know, opening the door for, uh, to potential disruptors who promise a better client experience. Here's Ripple. Also, we do see Earthport over here, which Ripple has a partnership with them. Uh, shout out to, by the way, this is like, these are some older uh, pictures. This is from like 2021, but shout out to Martin Kelly for this. Uh, but yes, Earthport is um, a partnership with Ripple. And uh, on the next slide here, we do see R3 as well as Ripple, Ripple Labs. Opportunity to optimize cross-border payments. This is all from BNY Mellon. Like this is absolutely insane. And then over here we do see the proof of concept POC, Ripple Connect software, Ripple Ledger slash network, and this is all centered on payment communications, quoting process, transaction settlement, ledger based on blockchain technology, model, uh, modeling a cross-border low-value payment use case, potential benefits to confirm via a POC, and. Uh, this is really kind of centered on some real-time liquidity monitoring, improved payment status transparency, certainty of end-to-end -end fees for clients, low processing cost, expedited payment settlement near real time. Now, when I hear that, it's kind of centered on the three to five second time frame with XRP. And uh, that's very interesting. Uh, greater straight through processing via upfront quoting process. Like this is a very substantial connection to uh, BNY Mellon. And down here we also do see sending a uh, financial institution to receiving financial institution through the Ripple ledger. Obviously, yes, these are a little bit older in terms of images. This is from 2021, but it still st stands true today. And, um, you know, I seen this retweeted multiple times on my timeline so I needed to check it out and obviously yes it is a little bit older of um, you know a little bit of a thread from 2021 but I'm telling you guys what we just recently seen is a huge um, update from BNY Mellon we do see last but not least here we have whisper polysign uh, digital asset buy now like I said this is from this is just from uh, well yesterday now but uh, we do see so this is uh, Sandy O'Connor, um, and if you guys don't know who she is, I highly advise you to look here at the board member of Ripple. Uh, you can see her background. It's over 30 years in terms of the financial industry. She retired as the Chief Regulatory Affairs Officer for JP Morgan Chase, where she set 
the regulatory strategy and led engagement with G20 policymakers. Um, but she has a lot more um, information behind her. Uh, for example, BNY Mellon, Bank of New York Mellon, uh, as well as with the Federal Reserve Board's alternative as well. I mean, she's a very substantial name in terms of Ripple. All of this is, I'm telling you guys, like you really need to pay attention to everything happening here with all these major connections. I know that a lot of people will say, all right, now you're just kind of connecting the dots. These dots have been connected for a very long time. Listen, at the end of the day, we know that Ripple is building out incredible connections. They have direct connections to major names. Pay attention to the names that are assigned to PolySign. I mean, listen, David Schwartz and Arthur Brito are probably two of the biggest names around Ripple. And then you add these other ones here, like Antoinette, for an example. Huge names. Uh, these are all from Ripple. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that this is incredible. I mean, listen, I believe that at some point in time, uh, we will see XRP being held by major institutions because that's their end goal. We just recently talked about this. I believe that the 50 billion in escrow, a lot of that, most of it, if not all of it, will be held by financial institutions. Um, I think that that is going to be the biggest um, value chain for XRP as well because a lot of that is going to be held up, locked up, and utilized for on-demand liquidity purposes um, as on-demand liquidity continues to expand as we have been seeing it. Um, I think that that's going to also provide an incredible value proposition for XRP as a settlement token and a settlement tool, if you will, um, but also as a medium of exchange, which is going to be very interesting. So definitely pay attention to all these connections. They all lead back to the biggest name in the game, which is, of course, Ripple. I mean, if you are not doing research on Ripple at this current moment in time, and if you are in crypto and you are not focused on XRP, listen, you are going to be left behind because XRP, for the longest time, has been shot down time and time again. And do you honestly think that this is because, you know, XRP is a security or XRP is this, that, whatever? No, it's because XRP at the end of the day, is the chosen one. XRP is disrupting a massive monopoly system, and they are terrified. The banks are terrified, and now they are getting in while everyone is ignoring it, while while everyone is distracted. This BNY Mellon announcement is probably one of the biggest ones since the BlackRock announcement back in the beginning of the summertime. So with all that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this before. It's been Nick. Peace out, guys.